Have you ever wondered how your favorite chocolate bar is made? Let's embark on a delicious journey, starting from the very beginning. Nestled in the tropical regions near the equator, we find the cacao tree, the unsung hero of our chocolate tale. This tree is the source of all the chocolate in the world, producing the precious cacao beans that are the heart and soul of every chocolate bar. Now not all cacao trees are created equal. There are three main types, Forastero, Criollo, and Trinitario. The Forastero is the most commonly found, known for its robust and strong flavor. The Criollo, on the other hand, is a rare gem, producing beans with a delicate and complex taste. And then we have the Trinitario, a hybrid of the two, balancing strength and subtlety in its flavor profile. The major players in cacao production are the Ivory Coast and Ghana, but we also have smaller markets in South America and Africa, contributing to the global chocolate pot. So it all starts with these cacao trees and their precious beans. After the cacao beans are ripe, they are harvested by hand. The process is as delicate as it sounds. Workers carefully pluck the football-shaped pods from the Theobroma cacao trees, being sure not to harm the tree or the beans inside. Once gathered, the cacao pods are opened with a swift, precise cut of a machete, revealing the beans and pulp inside. Now, you may be wondering, why not just scoop out the beans and get on with it? Well, that's where the magic of fermentation comes in. The beans and the pulp are placed together in a container, kickstarting a natural process that can last anywhere from two to eight days. During this time, the sugars in the pulp ferment and produce heat, which in turn initiates changes in the beans. This mellowing process is crucial as it helps to develop the complex fruity undertones we associate with fine chocolate. But it doesn't stop there. The beans need to be turned regularly during fermentation to ensure even exposure to the heat and to prevent mold growth. It's a careful balance, a dance of nature and nurture that transforms these humble beans into the beginnings of something truly delicious. Once fermented, the beans are ready for the next stage, drying. The next step is to dry the beans in the sun. Now imagine these beans basking under the sun's rays, losing their moisture and preparing themselves for the journey ahead. This drying process isn't just about evaporation, it's a crucial stage that stabilizes the beans and makes them safe for shipping. Our beans then embark on a voyage traveling from tropical regions near the equator to chocolate manufacturing facilities globally. Upon arrival, they are greeted with a warm welcome. Quite literally I might add as they are introduced to the roasting process. This is where the magic truly begins. In the roasting process the beans are heated to high temperatures, a transformative phase that brings out the rich inviting aroma we associate with chocolate. It's akin to toasting a piece of bread, enhancing its flavors and textures. The heat coaxes out the hidden depths of flavor within each bean, revealing the unique characteristics that make each batch of chocolate distinct. Roasted and ready, the beans now become nibs. These nibs, the heart of the bean, are the foundation of the chocolate we know and love. The journey of our chocolate is far from over, but for now, let's savor the aroma of these roasted beans anticipating the deliciousness that awaits in the stages to come. The roasted beans are then winnowed to remove the shells leaving us with nibs. These nibs my friends are the heart of the cocoa bean, and they're packed with all the goodness and flavor that we associate with chocolate. Now we take the nibs and start grinding them down. The heat from the grinding process melts the natural cocoa butter present in the nibs, transforming them into a thick aromatic paste. This is what we call cocoa paste or chocolate liquor, it's not the kind of liquor you're thinking of though. There's no alcohol here, just pure, unadulterated chocolate in its most raw and potent form. But we're not done yet. The chocolate liquor is then subjected to a pressing process. This pressure squeezes out the cocoa butter, leaving behind a solid mass known as the cocoa press cake. This press cake is then pulverized into what we know as cocoa powder, the base for many of our favorite chocolate treats. Now we have our base, the chocolate liquor. This is the starting point for all the delectable chocolate varieties that we know and love. From here, the journey of creating countless chocolate delights begins. Now comes the fun part, turning this chocolate liquor into chocolate. Imagine a painter with a blank canvas. That's what we have here with our chocolate liquor. It's rich, it's flavorful, but it's not quite chocolate yet. We need to add some color to this canvas, and by color I mean other ingredients like milk and sugar. It's the specific ratio of these ingredients that creates the different types of chocolate we all know and love. Now, let's talk about conching. No, we're not heading to the beach. 
In the world of chocolate, conching is a process where machines knead the chocolate paste. This isn't just a quick mix, oh no. This kneading can go on for several hours, even days. But it's worth the wait. Conching develops the flavor, giving us that melt-in-your-mouth texture we crave. It also helps to mellow any remaining acidic tones, balancing the overall taste of the chocolate. But we're not done yet. The chocolate mixture still needs refining. Think of it like a fine wine. It needs time and precision to reach its full potential. This refining process breaks down any remaining large particles, giving us a smoother, creamier texture. Lastly, it's time for tempering. This is where science meets art. Tempering involves carefully heating and cooling the chocolate to precise temperatures. This process gives the chocolate its glossy finish and that satisfying snap when you break a piece off. And there you have it, your favorite chocolate bar, ready to be wrapped and shipped. So, that's the journey of a cocoa bean to your chocolate bar. A complex process that starts in tropical regions near the equator, where cacao trees thrive. The cacao pods are carefully harvested and the beans and pulp are skillfully separated. The beans then go through a fermentation process, lasting up to 8 days, to mellow the flavor and develop those fruity undertones we love in our chocolate. After fermenting, the beans are dried under the sun, then roasted to bring out that distinct chocolate aroma. The shells are removed leaving us with cocoa nibs, which are ground into a cocoa paste, otherwise known as chocolate liquor. The cocoa butter is then separated from the paste to create cocoa powder. It's here in this stage that the magic happens. Different ingredients like sugar, milk, and sometimes even vanilla, are added to the cocoa paste to create various types of chocolate. The mixture is then kneaded in conching machines to develop flavors and texture, resulting in the smooth, melt-in-your-mouth chocolate we all adore. Next time you bite into a chocolate bar, remember the incredible journey it's been on. Now, isn't that a sweet thought? Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video informative and entertaining. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. We do like to know and hear your feedback. And, if you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where we post bonus material. Till next time, this is Geeky Tidbits, saying cheers, and have a good day.